Hey, good afternoon, Saints, targeted individuals. Um, this video, I just made a really long video, but it won't let me upload it. I have had nothing but problems with my computer, my camera, my phone. Haven't been online in over a month. Been under really bad satanic attacks. However, um, I'm going to have several different videos because i got to make them shorter to get them up on YouTube. This particular video is just to help any of you out there who are feeling really alone right now and aren't understanding what's going on. Uh, the Lord basically has told me the reason why I'm being isolated and really don't have anybody anymore is because uh, He wants us out of the world and He is putting us through the fire so that we're worthy to be able to go home with Jesus. But um, I just had the worst satanic attack from the enemy I think I've ever, ever endured over the past month. It's been going on about a month now. And I've been, I'm sorry about my voice, I've been crying literally for a week. A week. Um, this particular video is going to be on God's confirmation that every person in my building, or basically almost every one of them, is or was a gang stalker, including, this is the, heart, the one that hit me hardest, my ex-boyfriend that I was living with for a year and three months, and <coughs> I'm also getting attacked with my voice. I don't have a cold, but I've been having really bad coughing spells, especially when I'm when I'm reading my Bible or talking about the Lord. But anyway, yeah, I was living with a gang stalker. He told me he loved me and all this other stuff. And I had had a sense about it from the very beginning. However, I kept denying it, you know, thinking maybe it's in my head, maybe this, maybe he, you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Nope. He's a gang stalker. The Lord even gave me a couple dreams on this. Uh, one dream, uh, my ex actually placed a red target on my head. <laughs> on my forehead. It's like, how much more obvious can you get? But no, I just kept hoping because we targeted individuals. You know what I mean? It's like, we don't have anybody. And the people that might like us, they scare off. The, the ones that aren't part of it, they'll scare off. And then the other ones that end up in our life or infiltrated into our life, basically, are the stalkers. <laughs> it just gets, uh, I've been, the only word that keeps coming to mind is overwhelmed. And I just wanted to talk about it for a minute to get it off my chest and to maybe help somebody else that's feeling like this. Um, so I moved out. He was being just really acting strange and I was just having a really bad feeling about it and I moved out and I left on good terms. And he even said I didn't have to move out if I didn't want to. And uh, we had even talked about getting another place but I know the Lord told me to leave. So I did, even though I really, I wanted to be with him still, but the Lord had been telling me to, you know, warning me on this. So I left. I have the tiniest, tiniest little, tiny, it's like five by ten that I'm living in right now, but at least it's mine, you know. And I don't know how long I'll be here because within about a week, as we targets know, the gang stalkers took over on literally surrounded me. And uh, just a minute ago on the last video I did, one of them was actually staring in my window. I'm not kidding. It just, it's, it's unbelievable, these attacks, how strong they are right now. That's because we are so close to going home, saints. You chosen people out there that are going through this, you're chosen. God is refining us. He's testing us. But I just, I'll try to make this one just about what happened with my ex-boyfriend. So, anyway. Um, 
So I move out, left on good terms, you know. And then about four or five days later, he texts me saying he missed me. And then a few days after that, you know, um, I'm going to the grocery store and the Lord told me to turn around and go by this bus stop. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what am I going to see over here? And I get over there and there's, I see the back of a guy's head with a red, a red uh, hat. Of course, it's a gang stalker. I go and I look at him. That's where the Lord led me was to him. There was like 15 or 20 people there. But I was specifically led to go to him. I go to him. I look at him and he looks at me and he looks really scared. He looked frightened that I saw him. And I said, hi. And he goes, hi. And I, I, actually, he didn't say hi back. He just smiled. And I turned and I walked back. And I'm thinking, okay, that was weird. I know that guy from somewhere. And the Lord said, go back. I want you to witness to him. And I still couldn't place where I knew him, but I knew I knew his face. So I went back over there. I was a young guy, probably about 25, maybe. Cute. And uh, I go back over, and then I saw he had a little black dog. And that's when I knew where I knew him from. Yep. He was a, a dude in my building that I just moved from. And he was a gang stalker. But the only, he was the only one in the building that I literally, back then even, when I first saw him, did not feel he really wanted to be part of it. That he was being coerced in or something. And uh, the Lord has also showed me there's a lot of evil, satanic people that do gang stalking just because they like it. They get off to harming others. Then there's some that do it for money. Some that do it for, you know, a lesser sentence, like, you know, they have, they went to jail for something and they'll get a lesser sentence, which I think may be why my ex did this, but, and then, or it could just be for money with him, because he was, like, really stingy with money, but anyway, uh, but this one, I think, was coerced into it, scared into it or something, and he really didn't want to do it, so I went back up to him and I said, I know you, and he looked real nervous again, and I said, do you live at, and I gave my old address, and he goes, yeah, I said, I'm your neighbor, that the whole building was gang stalking, as soon as I said that, two dudes, one was standing off to one side of him, and one was behind him, two dudes looked, I mean, their heads went, Doop! and looked right over, and start, as soon as I said gang stalker, or the one I was, or, Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> I haven't had much sleep. Anyway, <laughs> I've been crying a lot. I went out drinking. You know, I've been under such bad attacks. I went back to drink to drinking and just, anyway. Um, so they come over and the one guy stands behind him and put his arms like, I guess, to do one of their signals. And the other one came up as I'm talking. I'm about to start witnessing to him. And asked him for a cigarette. And it was so rude because he got in between us to block the guy from looking at me, the kid. And he could have asked anybody there. There was 15 or 20 people. But he wanted to cut off our conversation. But I kept talking over him. He's asking, hey, man, can I get a cigarette? And then I said, I said, the Lord showed me or told me to come over here. I did not even see you. It was the back of your head. I did not know who you were. And the Lord told me to come back. I said, I'm telling you the truth. He told me to let you know that you can get out of it. And he looked at me. And none of these stalkers make eye contact. But he, he made eye contact with me like he was truly listening. I really felt he was listening. And he said, um, he, or I said, um, you can get out of this. I said, you just have to. And before I could finish, the guy goes, oh, a little black dog. Oh, I want a black, I want a little dog. I want a little dog. It was so rude. And I'm talking over the guy as he's standing between us. And I said, uh, the Lord wants me to let you know that you have not hardened your heart yet. And you can't get out of it. All you have to do is call out to Jesus. And then the guy starts talking even louder. And then the other guy comes up and was saying something to me. And I said, it's very obvious this is part of your crew. They don't want us talking. I said, so I'll leave it at that. And I said, just cry out to Jesus. He will help you. 
And as I walked off, the kid turned back around and said, thank you, thank you, like that. That was my total confirmation that I was right. The building are, were all gang stalkers, but it also hurt me because it was my confirmation that my ex was part of it because he was friends with that kid. And as, as you know, we targets know, People around us that are in on it will make will make us think we're crazy. He used to tell me I was crazy, you know, and now, oh, the whole building, oh, right. Yeah, all the people, and that kid basically verified it. Okay, so that hit me pretty hard, but then about 20 minutes after that, my boyfriend had not called me in probably about a week from the one time he called me and said, I miss you, and then he didn't call for about a week. He called within 20 minutes of me seeing this kid, and it was a strange text that said, did you get all your stuff moved? And I thought that was strange because I'd moved out two weeks ago. That was also a verification that he was nervous and wanted to see what I'd found out about, you know, with him, you know, did the kid tell me anything? It was just very strong confirmation. But then the most confirmation is when I decided, well, I know he's a stalker. The Lord has warned me of this. The Lord showed me this. That's why I didn't stay with him. But I wanted to I wanted to not believe it. You know what I mean? Because I was lonely. I mean, I'm basically being isolated, uh, which we targets know all about. And so I texted him a few times. Asked him if he wanted to go get something to eat. After he had, he was the one that texted me saying he missed me. I didn't call him. No, he can't. He's got a cold. And then next time, no response. And I text several times over the next few days. Just getting a really bad feeling. And then finally he says, oh, he needs some space. Which was very odd because by then it had been like three weeks or a month. But, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm dealing with, and I just want to put it out there. It is very, very hurtful because it seems like the only people that are in my life, and I guess most targets know this, are stalkers. They're sent to us, and I know there's people that will like me, and I don't even mean like a boyfriend or whatever, just friends or whatever. You know, they might want to befriend me. But then the next time you see them, all of a sudden they don't want anything to do with you. Act like they don't know you. And it's very puzzling. But what I believe is happening is the enemy is getting to them. Either telling them, you know, crazy stuff about us that's not true. Or maybe telling a little bit about us, but making it seem like way more, you know, weird. Or, you know, maybe spreading lies. That could be it. And then it also could be maybe they're scared to be friends with us because they're told something. So then that leaves us with the gang stalkers that are in on our targeting. And uh, it just gets very lonely. Very, very lonely. So I've been under such a bad attack from, the, from this. And then the final thing that happened with him is, so I slip up, not slip up, a little, a lot. I've been drinking for about two weeks now. It's, I mean, not every day, but you know, every other day. It's so, so overwhelming. Um, so I'm with another friend that I find out is also in on my targeting that I knew from a long time ago that just happens to want to come down and visit. Yeah, to lead me back into the drinking. And uh, we go out and then I meet this other person that I'd seen, you know, that I'd met randomly before. And he says, hey, y'all want to go get something to eat? This is on Valentine's Day, by the way. Sure. So we go, and the, the place, the guy picks it, of all the places in the city, and where I live has tons of restaurants. Who was sitting at the bar in this restaurant? Yep, my ex-boyfriend. And I walked past him, kind of in disbelief, not sure if it was him or not, because he, he didn't look the same. He'd shaved, and his hair was longer. And I was kind of in disbelief, went to the bathroom. As I passed him, I looked closer at him. I was going to say something when I came out of the bathroom, and he was gone. It's really been really painful, y'all, but I'm, I'm praying for everybody that's under these kind of attacks that the Lord will give you comfort, and if any of y'all are going through this, please let me know. It would be very encouraging for me. God bless you. And